Hi, my name is Ali Reza. I'm currently a senior artist at Microsoft The Coalition, and I'm also head of Machine Gun Studio. For today's video, I'm planning to show you guys how to create this glitch effect and apply it to any texture you like. For the duration of this video, we are going to learn a few things. First of all, we are going to learn how to distort any texture by manipulating the UV input. And next, we are going to learn a few things about basics of sign node and how to get the result we are looking for. And lastly, we are going to learn how to combine both methods to achieve our glitch effect we want. So, before getting into any details, I want to explain a little bit what is happening inside this shader. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a bit more here for better visibility. Not much happening here. Most of the job is being done back here. Um, I'll get back to that later, but all you need to know now is that all those functions are manipulating the UV of this texture to achieve the glitch effect. And the texture I'm using is uh, one of the textures we have used in our Cybertown pack. I will post a link to that pack if you want to check it out. However, you don't really have to use this texture. The good thing about uh, this workflow is that you can hook this up to any UV and you get your glitch effect right away. About this uh, multiply node that I have here, this is really something optional. Uh, I'm using this just in case if I want to change the color of the texture or if I really want to increase the intensity of the emissive. Usually what I do instead of using another constant and multiplying it by that constant number, I'm just increasing the value here, which is doing the same thing. Or if I really want those blooms to pop out more, um, I can give it a crazy number, let's say 2000. There's no limit really to this number. Now that I'm starting this material from scratch, um, the first thing that I'm going to make going to be that glitch distortion. That's a simple thing to do. I need to manipulate the UV of this map by a noise map that I already have in my content browser ready. Uh, there are two ways. I can either drag and drop this map into my shader graph or selecting it and then hold down T and then press uh, left click button to bring it into my graph. Okay, now if I simply just connect this to my UV, any of this, if a red channel, green channel, you'll see I'm getting a crazy distortion. To tune down the distortion, the first step is to add this noise into a UV coordination instead of connecting it directly to the UV. And now, after getting that uh, UV chord, I want to blend this noise by adding into my texture or UV coordination. Okay, all right, this is a still too strong, so let's use a multiply node to reduce the intensity of this distortion. So let's say, let's put a number of 0 0.1. Um, okay, this looks better, but let's work a little bit more on this. I think we need a UV code for this uh, noise texture. Let's try something like squeezing it to 8. Yeah, 8 looks good. Let's try 10. Yeah, 10 is too much. We go with 8. Now, this is starting to look a lot more like a glitch. Now we can try animating the noise. Let's bring a panner. I hold down P on my keyboard and click. This should go between the texture chord and the UV input. To see the effect of this uh, panner on my noise texture, I really like to start previewing this node. Um, a panner will allow me to pan my texture along Y or Z axis. This is too slow. Let's try minus 0.3. Yeah, this is better. To see the final distortion, let's just stop proving this note. All right, so now that we have this distortion ready, uh, the next step is to create some function that trigger this distortion on top of our texture randomly during the time. That would be how we get that flickering glitch that we are looking for. Okay, before starting the next stage, I've done some cleanups. I have placed some comment box around the main areas. And here it is the glitch distortion effect we have created earlier. I have made some small adjustment behind the scene 
which I will show you real quick right now. The first thing was I increased the speed of the panner from minus 0.3 to minus 1. And the next thing is I placed this intensity parameter so it would be easier to control the distortion intensity later on from our material instance. So the next thing I'm going to create would be that trigger function uh, which will keep triggering this distortion effect on top of the texture. So at uh, some point of time, this texture should look completely normal. And for fraction of time, the glitch should happen. And for the next three seconds, it will stop happening and happens again. By the way, keep in mind that a sign node needs a time node attached to it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Now that we have our sign node, let's preview it and see what is happening. So a sign node on paper. Uh, let me bring up this uh, Photoshop file I have here. What this sine wave is giving us is a value bouncing between 1 and minus 1 in a repetitive wave motion through the time. But what we need instead of a fade in and fade out that what we have right now is an on and off behavior. That is why I'm going to stop previewing this and I will introduce a new node to this calculation, which is a seal. Now, if I preview the seal again, you will notice that we are getting more or less what we want. So what, what a seal does is taking your value and rounds it up to the next integer. I can show this on the paper again. Think about this. So as soon as 0 becomes 0 0.0001, what the seal does, it takes it and stick it up to the next integer, which is 1. If you like to see what a sine graph is going to look like after seal, this is what it is. So for the whole portion of the sine wave being a value bigger than 0, the seal is returning us the value of 1. And for the whole portion of sine wave being a value below 0, we are getting a value of 0. Just keep in mind, there is a small fraction of time that the value is hitting minus 1, but I'm ignoring it because at the end of the day, I'm going to clamp all the values between 0 and 1. Let's jump back to our shader graph. So the first problem I have with the current flashing is that both white and black are getting equal display time. To change that, I need to bring a subtract node between our seal and sign node. Okay, so the subtraction number should be something really close to one, but not one itself, because that will stop the flashing completely. And I will show you why later on. So let's try 0.8 all right so now you can see we are getting a lot more time between each flashing now if i try a number closer to one like let's say 0.95 you'll see we'll get even bigger gap between each flashing okay going back to the sine graph i want to show you why we use the subtract by subtracting a value of 0.8, what we did basically, we pushed our whole graph down by this much. Now, the top of our sine graph is only reaching to 0.2. You can imagine what will happen to the sine graph after filling it to the seal node. See how we are getting more gaps between each flashing. And by knowing all of this, we understand that subtracting a value of 1 will push the whole graph to 0 and below it and making flashing to stop completely. The next thing I like to do is to increase our wavelengths. There are two ways to do that. The first method is to use a period number inside our sine node. A bigger period number is equal to a longer wavelength. However, there is a problem with using this method. Now, I have no way to control the wavelengths through a material instance by a parameter. I'm going to set back my period to its default number and use my second method. I will bring in a divide node by holding down D on the keyboard and clicking and placing it between our time and sign node. By doing that, we are getting the exact same result as the previous method with the only difference that now I'm able to use a parameter in my divide node to control this in our material instance. I'm also going to create another parameter naming it flashing gap for the subtract node that we have created earlier.
All right. Now I'm going to put whatever we have talked about on the sine graph into the test by placing a debug scalar value node. A debugger basically is showing us the value we are outputting in numbers. As you can see, we are getting a flashings of one, few minus ones, few zeros as well. And this is really matching with whatever we have talked about here. We are getting ones, here we are getting zeros, and also down here we are getting few minus ones. So this means our calculation were correct. So I'm going to delete this debugger and get rid of all those negative numbers by placing a clamp in front of this calculation. And now if I debug it one more time, we can see that we are only getting ones and zeros. All right, so now that we have our glitch uh, trigger ready, I'm going to get rid of this debugger and fit this into our distortion. To do that, I'm placing a multiply node and multiply the trigger we have created with the distortion map we had earlier and then connecting it to the multiplier for the glitch intensity. And now you can see we are getting this glitch effect happening every now and then. But the only problem I have with this is that this is happening in a really predictable manner. To, to get rid of that, what I want to do is to duplicate this whole calculation one more time and try different numbers for each of these parameters that we have already created. So this way, each of these are giving us different length wave and by combining these together, we are getting more chaotic manner out of them. Now that we have two sets of each of these, I'm going to label them by different numbers. So this set's gonna be zero ones, and the next set's going to be wavelength zero two and flashing gap zero two. Now let's add them together. And I'm going to preview this to see what is happening. So of course nothing is happening because we have the same numbers for both, but if I, for example, change the wavelength for this to 1.3 and change this gap to, let's say, 0.9, you can see we are getting more chaotic manner out of this flashing light. Okay, so let's connect this here and stop previewing this ad. All right, you can just leave it here if you want, but I'm gonna do something that I call it cherry on top here. So as you can see, this uh, glitch is keep just pushing upward every time it's happening. That would be really nice if one of the glitch keep going down and the other one goes up. That is really simple to do. I'm gonna just put a multiply node here and use a minus one. Okay. All right, there we go. There we have our glitch effect. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Please do let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to Machine Gun channel. This was our first tutorial, but this is not going to be the last one. I promise. Uh, do let me know if you guys have any requests for tutorials, especially shaders. And lastly, thank you for watching.